One foot, one foot. Friday, McCulloch, and then Norman. So he's on the fly and there's a little knock on his there, detected by Morris. Well, oh, Benny Hammond at the front row, he raised his arms to the heaven there. He thought he was in a hole. I think Norman threw the dummy at him and he, he feels as though had the pass come, he might have gone through the gap under the line. Let's have a look here. Norman to the line, throws the dummy. Hannon strolls straight through the line and says, I'd have got a try if you pass that. Scrum feed this time to Parramatta. And the chances they come away from their own line to tell you the incredible true story of Australia's greatest gold heist. The brothers who conned Alan Bond. The great mint swindle coming to nine soon. Keating. And Mark. Down on his own 30 metre line. Parramatta needs Sander. This is why he's come to the club. This is what they're looking for. Now again on fifth tackle up. Here's a chance. It's come off the rump of Hammond. Gone down to Gillette. To Brisbane again. In a magnificent attacking position. And another opportunity to put Parramatta to the sword. Norman, 15 out from the line. McCulloch goes to the blind side. Links up with Reed. Reed is held there though by Hindmarsh and Morgan. Across the face of Parker. It's come away out to Josh McGuire. Held there by Keating as long as he could. And away goes McCulloch. Hanging. He ran at the same depth and this time it's there for him. He got a bit time. The big fella. Ben Hammond rolling into the space and putting it down for a try that probably seals the game. Eight minutes from time, 16-6 to Brisbane. Yeah, lovely dummy half work here. The cutout pass by Taniela Lasalo, all mixed up. Good gap running there from Ben Hammond. And on what we've seen so far tonight, that should wrap it up. Yeah, a touch of irony, really, that Ben would score that try. You might recall that... Chris Sando's kick came straight off his backside and uh, then it was Matt Gillette from memory that took it down to the 20 metre line and it was shortly after that that Ben Hannon, well his backside really proved the difference didn't it? Yes I guess you could say that. Good work by the Broncos, they weren't playing at all well in the first half. And they've really had to persevere and scrounge and scrap and scrape to get back in this. And they've done it. 18 to 6 after 73. Wally on the sideline. Well, the Broncos have just been prepared to put in that little bit of extra effort. The Kina replay showed that they placed pressure on the kicker. Benny Hanna charged it down. Seconds later, guided himself perfectly into a gap to put the ball down. And that's the game for Brisbane. Sando then. Just into... One of the last passages of this game. And Josh Maguire with a rugged run back and meeting them. 12 metres out from the line. Sunday. Yes, Gus. No, mate, go ahead. Sunday, Wide World of Sports. Sunday morning, this is Wide World of Sports, followed by the Sunday footy show hosted by Peter. Cameron Smith will join the boys on the footy show. And then we'll go live to Eden Park to Andrew for the Warriors versus the Eagles. So you manly people, you'll see the, the Eagles live from across the Tasman. And then we come back to Australia to the first one-day cricket final, which will go on into the night, obviously. So it's a, a total day of sport, really, on the sports leader. The Olympic Station, Channel 9. Burt playing the ball outside 30. CEO. Now they're eight metres their own side of halfway, but it would seem the bird has flown. Casey McGuire turning the ball in. Moy Moy plays it. They've come up with six points, Parramatta. They've had a, a lot of possession at the scoring end of the field. And their points came in the first four minutes from a fairly innocuous rubber kick that was fumbled by a Bronco. Other than that, they haven't looked all that constructive, and there's still a lot of work to do on their attack. I, I think it's the Broncos that kept them in it for most of the game. And in the end, the Broncos were too strong. 
once they got it all together. Jared Deal. And this is obviously a, a wonderful victory for them as well. You know, with no Darren Lockyer there to get them out of trouble as he's done so often in the past. They've come here tonight, they, they didn't play well early, they got behind on the scoreboard. But in the end it'll be a comfortable victory and, and one that will give them a lot of confidence going the next week and the weeks beyond. So the is cramped up. Dr. Dr. McCulloch. First on the scene. Well, I said it about Luke Bird earlier, and I, I guess it applies to people like Corey Norman as well. It's, it's not their night, really. This, this weather condition is not the night for those sort of players. But uh, he'd, he'd certainly have to get a pass mark for what he's done tonight. He's challenged them a few times, and he's had them grabbing at mid-air on a couple of occasions. They're an enormous pair of shoes that he's going to endeavour to fill capably. They've got a lot of youth in this team. It's a good team. It's a really good team. It's, and I, you know, it's, it's, it's just the perfect blend of experience and youth, isn't it? I, I think it's a really good team, and I think it's been coming together for a few seasons. I think this bloke's a really good coach. And I know everyone's saying you know, Lockie is missing, but... You know, Broncos in their history, they had to get over the loss of Wally Lewis and did. And they had to get over the loss of Alan Langer and they did. And they'll get over the loss of Darren Lockyer, as great as he is. And these young fellas will they'll find their way. It's all good. Laying the ball near halfway. Sando over for Maguire and now for Ponga. Ball to ground, it's still okay, it's been off the feet, it's still okay, it's all off the feet. Tonga got it back and now it's with Blair, and Blair is taken down 20 metres out from the line. I just thought I saw Shane Haynes start waving a hand over there like he was nullifying the tackle count, but he sort of pulled it down. Moy Moy plays the ball close to the line, it goes from Keating, through Burt, finds Sando, right foot, right foot. And then he's put the ground 15 metres out from the Brisbane line. So Keating pushing the ball across to Allgood. Parabatta with a late chance to put points on the board. Knocked on, I think. It's knocked on by Brisbane. Parabatta. Pull Matt Gillette to his feet so that they can get on with it. Just under three minutes of the game remaining. Parramatta will feed the scrum. It's a matter of ten metres away from the line. Stay down. Keep going. Up and up. Perfect. Make sure we're bound, boys. Casey Maguire. Lock. Feeding the scrum. Sando away to the left. The regulation 5 8 position. Morgan away to the right on the other side. Fed out the back. Kitty. Sando. Tonga shows it. And precariously hangs on to the ball. He will play it as quickly as possible. Did well, in fact. Blair goes scampering away. Giant of a youngster to play at a couple of metres from the line. Keating bullets it away. Sando on. And it was a hard ball for Casey to take. Here goes Norman. Norman's reached outside the 40 metre line. And he'll play the ball on halfway. Reed's keen to capitalise. Joining in is Hoffman from the back. Swerves around a couple. Comes to a third. Moy Moy makes the tackle. And flopping in there is Hindmarsh. Now it's come on, and it's down to Josh Maguire. Shoulders away from the Salo. who play the ball 27 out from the Parramatta line. Brisbane comfortable at 18 points to six now. It hasn't been all that uh, comfortable for the major part of the journey. But it's played now by Alex Glenn. They go left side, and they go to Norman again. He dummy, dummy things. Goes towards the line, pass forward. Pass forward, pass forward to Jack Reed. It's a shame, deserved a try right the way from the, the great defence to get the error at the other end of the field through to the last pass, which unfortunately went forward. But it was a, a strong finish to the back end of this game, and the further this has gone, the stronger the Broncos have become.
I think it's an appropriate time. The, the box goes up in the background there. I, I think they were probably riding young Corey to put a try on the board for himself, really, more so than the team. Darren, an assessment of Corey's performance? Sterling. Well, they've got none out of three, and that's so far. Corey Norman. Yes, he's, uh, he's got better as the game's gone on. Uh, I mean, that's I remember the first game I played with him as a trial match, and he scored a try from about 40 out with that sort of footwork. He's very skillful, and he's done well tonight. So Parramatta with... That's the ball one. inside their own 20 metre line. Yeah, they're in they're in my top three. They all, you know, and I sort of was making that statement from early last year. But what is your top three? Manly, Tigers, Broncos. Three. Okay. Corey, release. Here it is. Can't find a place for Melbourne. What did they just say? Manly, Tigers, Broncos. Hi, Moss is no need to be. So touchy about it, it was just a simple question. Tom oh, Andrew, straight off. Tens with me, boys. No, Corey, Corey, you're Look very ominous, don't they, Brisbane? They need a balance, and they've, they've got exactly that. Good leadership out there, experience. The best bunch of young players we've seen come through at the one club for a while now, and he's one of them, Hoffman. Good speed. Step straight, and beach one. Taking just inside his own field. That's the 30 metre line, and this will be the final play of the night. The Parramatta has led for a long, long way. The first try came at the fourth minute. The next came at the 52nd minute. And then the Broncos took control, absolute control, of the game. They got their act together, they completed their sets. They stopped making the mistakes that they were. And once that happened, they rolled into into action and into unison and put three together Yao Yi, Wallace and Hammond and they ran out victors at 18 points to six.